Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So kind of impromptu video, but what the hell Shea Moisture? What the actual hell? If you are unaware or you haven't seen it, basically yesterday Shea Moisture released this new campaign about hair hate. And in this campaign, the first advert that they released um, featured basically a bunch of white women and one woman who just by looking at her would be racially ambiguous. And they were all talking about their kind of experiences, I guess, growing up and the adversaries, so to speak, that they faced to do with their hair, all about their hair and hair texture. It didn't feature anybody with type four hair. It didn't feature anybody who just to look at, you'd be like, yep, yeah, you're black. Like it didn't feature any of that. Despite the fact, if you consider Shea Moisture, I think it's around 20, cause I'm about to be 25. I think it's 25, if not a little bit older than that, years old. And this company started as a black owned business. I think it still is in terms of the inner company, the umbrella company that owns it now, I think is uh, white owned, but it's still selectively a black owned business. And more so the customer base is still majoritively black people, black women. It was started by this black man who apparently had a grandmother in Sierra Leone who used to give him recipes. And I guess in a sense, kind of talked about shea butter and African hair practices. And he noticed a huge and very necessary audience and market for black people and more so for black women who were looking to go natural and needed natural based products to help their hair flourish. So this advert that they've released feels like a massive slap in the face when you consider the fact that black women in particular have constantly bigged up and popularized Shea Moisture to what it is now today humongous, over 150 lines. And the problem isn't that, or my problem isn't that they've diversified. That's business, get your coin, do what you've got to do. But when you think about it in the nitty gritty, that literally it's black women that have fed you and then you completely disregard and ignore and forget that and put up this advert as if to say, nah, we don't need you anymore or that they aren't still the majority of your coin is just bizarre to me. It's, <laughs> it's a little bit disrespectful, to be honest. It feels like one of the companies that really was ingrained in family and black community, the one place where you should feel included, all of a sudden, now it's hot, doesn't care for you anymore. Now there was a second advert and there was also a larger advert, like a longer advert. And in the second half, it did feature Janelle Stewart, beautiful, dark skin, kinky coily hair. It featured another lady who I can't remember her name, but she's so beautiful. She's statuesque and she's got freckles and she's also got quite short uh, type four hair. So that was really cool to see, like short hair texture. You don't often see short hair. And there was also another lady that had faux locks. But when they released that part, it just felt a bit like Jojo. It's just too little too late. How are you gonna put last the very people that put you first? It doesn't make any sense. Why not just have the advert merge together? If, if you're going for this whole unity, diversity thing, why not just release the longer advert first and have a bunch of those different races and different hair textures in the first advert. Why have that first advert be solely for people with type three and above hair when a majority of your audience has type four hair? Just at the weekend, there was the natural hair show and I was looking at some of these videos there and you could see the people that were volunteering themselves for Shea Moisture's demonstrations all had type four hair. And more than likely, the women who bought products that day all had type four hair or majoritively would have had type four hair. So to act like we then don't exist when you're doing big brand campaigns to not represent us, it's kind of like, well, why the hell should we then spend money on you? And people really do underestimate the black dollar, particularly black women and their dollar because black women, we like to spend money
money. Like to get our nails done, go to a little spa spa, like hair, get our hair done. And hair is a big part of black culture. So this whole campaign has just felt like a massive smack in the face and I'm just quite frankly disappointed. And when I even looked at the longer advert, you had about five white women in there and one visibly, I can tell straight away, black woman in there. How does that work? And the whole campaign is about hair hate. What, please? has a blonde white woman faced comparatively to a black woman, to a dark skinned woman with kinky coily hair. What kind of hair hate have they really faced? There was that, that woman in the first advert was like, oh, sometimes I just don't know what to do with it. That's a general thing, like, yeah, we all might have a bad hair day, but until you're literally being expelled from school, fired from jobs, like, I don't think that white woman has ever had to think to herself before a job interview, how should I wear my hair? Is the employer going to judge me based on my hair and my hair texture? Should I cover it to conform? Like, if I want to then wear a wig or braids, am I gonna have to explain myself? Do you have set rules that specifically pinpoint and discriminate against your hair texture and a hair texture that is unique to one demographic. I don't really see what she could have faced. And yet you steady had that blonde woman with practically straight hair, another blonde woman with shorter hair, you had a redhead and uh, another two redheads who I don't know if they were sisters. Yes, this redhead, she, I know that people make stupid stereotypes about redheads but you said in the video you dyed your hair blonde. So what else have you faced? The same with the blonde woman, like I can only think of that 1950s type of stereotype that blonde women aren't intelligent. But I don't even know of anyone that even says that anymore. Shea Moisture have since apologized for it. They've made a huge apology on their Instagram and on their Facebook. And one of the things that frustrated me more so than the controversy to begin with was you still had a lot of white women not all but a, a good amount of white women that just weren't getting it like they were still saying well why can't I use Shea Moisture that's racist like no no one is saying you cannot use it use it use Shea Moisture buy it rant about it, be on the billboard, nobody cares. The point is, how can you kick down an entire group of people, the same group of people that got you where you are today? You know, if me and this blonde woman were to sit down in a room and we're just talking and we're talking about politics, there will be things that we would share in. There will be things that me and her would understand that like a man would just never get. You know, there are things that we would share in oppression wise, like rape culture, abortion, um, women's rights and equality, sexism. There are things that we'd be able to talk about and discuss and share in and understand, right? There are things that we would share in, but there are also things that we would just never share in because I'm black, she's white. So there are experiences that I will have and that I will face that she will never face and never understand. And the same with our hair texture. And you would hope that with that thing that we share, having that awareness of the oppression and what that feels like, you would hope that she would empathize, not sympathize, empathize with the struggles that I would then go through and would want to kind of be an ally, so to speak, and want to speak up against the oppressions and discriminations that I would face. And yet you had a whole bunch of women on that post saying, well, this is ridiculous, calling black women a bunch of whiny babies. Just not getting it. Two seconds, if you are watching this and you're not a woman of color, please just open those ears, the eyes, open the mind a little bit to understand where we're coming from. You can use Shea Moisture. But where the hell were we? 
when black women and loads of black bloggers have, myself included, been promoting the hell out of Shea Moisture for free, bigging it up. These times, from a UK perspective, we'd have to go to Croydon and Harlesden and Allgate just to get some Shea Moisture, paying up the odds because we wanted to try these products that were supposedly amazing and great for our hair. Paying that way so much that you've then seen over there in the US, the heads of these companies are like, whoa, we're seeing quite a few people over here are buying stuff that you can now launch in Boots and in Superdrug, the way you could not have done before, quite frankly. There was also a lot of um, black men weighing in on their opinions on black women. No thank you. How is Pantene doing better than you? Pantene, the same one that's famous for the swoosh swoosh and that swinging golden hair. How are they even knowing that black women spend a lot of money and time and effort on their hair that they even have switched things up and designed new products and released this whole entire campaign featuring loads of black women and little girls. Amazing. But Shay, <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> I would say about 80 to 90% of the products that I use on my hair are from black owned businesses. But there is a few things that I use that aren't, like Christoph Robin, L'Oreal, Body Shop, John Frieda, I've just started dabbling with John Frieda again. And these companies, I don't think they've ever <laughs> featured black women with tightly coiled hair. I mean, L'Oreal is really up in their game recently, or certainly in the UK, they've really done a lot of diverse campaigns, and I think that's great, they, they're they listening. Because I mean, all you have to do, I've, I've mentioned this on a representation post, I'll leave it down below in my blog post, that all you have to do is go on these brand social media pages, and the customers are right there. We are more direct than ever with social media, that we can tell you exactly what we need, exactly what we're looking for, and exactly what we don't see. And what we don't see is a lot of representation of the society we live in. You know, the body shop didn't come from a place of wanting to big up black women. The body shop came from a natural-based, ecological, save the earth, type of branding. Um, but Shea Moisture came from this women of colour, support, community, hair, they've completely ignored us and forgotten about us, despite us being a huge source of your money and a huge part of your success. But I don't know how disappointed I should stay if I'm steady using other products that have never cared about me, <laughs> you know? Um, another thing is, I really wanted to do, this is more like a me to you thing, I really wanted to do an updated moisture routine video to show you like how I moisturise my hair, how often I do that and the little changes that I make depending on the hairstyle because I haven't done it for a few years now and obviously if you've been following my channel uh, you will know the thing that I have been using to moisturise my hair is Shea Moisture's restorative conditioner. So. I was gonna obviously feature it, but I'm now just feeling like, why the hell should I? Like, it's just a continuous cycle of people with type four hair doing the most and getting the least. So I don't know whether I should just carry on as normal, film this video because you've seen me talk about it 101 times anyway, so should I just carry on as normal and film my moisture routine? Maybe I should talk about it and perhaps show you a few alternative products that I think work just as well for you just in case you um, don't want to buy Shea Moisture anymore that way you don't feel like I'm recommending you to do that I mean I never I'm never forcing your hand when I show you things I've never been sponsored by a hair brand before <laughs> and I usually just show you stuff like as and when I'm using it I don't want to do a moisture routine and say I've been using this when I haven't, I'd rather talk to you about the actual things that I'm using, um, but I respect that after this, I've seen a lot of people say that they are not buying Shea Moisture anymore. Please do let me know. Um, but in general, I would like to know your thoughts on this whole controversy, 
Have you RSVP to the Shea Moisture is over party? Have you burnt your products? You're no longer into it. Do you not care? Maybe you never cared. Maybe you never even used Shea Moisture before, so it doesn't matter. I'm feeling like I was rooting for you. We were all rooting for you. I like the products. I don't like the company right now. The company is in a corner because I believe this is like the third time that something like this has happened. I don't want to be one of those people that says, I'm never using it again. And then this whole thing blows over in two weeks and I wanna use it. And you guys are like, Zara, you said you don't like them and you're never gonna use them again. So what's changed, you know? So I'd love to hear your opinion. I will see you in the comments. Otherwise, I will see you in another video. Thanks for watching. Bye.